The story you're about to see is not a pretty one. It involves one of New York City's anti-crime units. The policemen assigned to these units don't wear uniforms and they travel in unmarked police cars. Many of them are white and yet they're often assigned to black and Puerto Rican neighborhoods. They have been praised by police officials as being one of the most effective anti-crime tools developed in recent years, but some civil rights leaders have, sailed, have assailed these anti-crime cops for being too trigger happy and too brutal with minority groups. Producer Richard Kotuk recently spent a week with an anti-crime unit in the Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood. Here's his graphic report. This is the 79th Precinct, a square mile of Brooklyn's Bedford-Stuyvesant. George Katz and Frank Nequipil are part of the precinct's anti-crime team. Their job is to try and stop violent street crime. A call comes over the radio. A man has been shot on Halsey Street. We're supposed to be sharp. We're supposed to know what we're doing when we go out there. I consider us winners when we're locking up the people who are committing the crimes. I consider us losers when we're getting crime after crime and we just can't seem to come up with a perpetrator. Then we're losers. But while we're losing, uh, we're losing a, a paper battle, uh, the people in the street are actually, they're losing the actual battle. They're, they're the ones who are bleeding, we're not. This time, the cops are too late. Jack Motes, a disabled World War II veteran, is dying on the sidewalk. He's been shot twice in the head. <laughs> A hundred and ten thousand people live in the 79 precinct, and the crime rate is staggering. Ten thousand were committed last year. There were twelve hundred felonies and six hundred felony assaults, including rapes and attacks with knives, guns, car aerials, razors, and baseball bats. There's a murder a week in this precinct, and a crime is committed every hour of every day. Probably his. Outline as well, too. Where's Lee? Give us a hand. Step on. Step on. Take his head, take his head. What's he here with? Gunshot. I don't know, he's still with. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant, the captain, or somebody? Over here. You get a 95 tag put on this man, please? You get a 95 tag. Alright, we have a description of four teenagers, no, uh, no further description, two south and two north on Bedford Avenue. Alright, I'll tell you what, see and, if you can get uh, around and start asking questions, alright? And, and the sister yes, is uh, living down the block, the sister of the deceased here. Is she notified? Yeah, she, knows about, it, we, she knows about it, but we... She knows about it. Alright, well, somebody get a hold of the sister so we get all the information he's, on the he's sister. Going to, he's going to Kings County Morgue. Alright. Geez, he bled a lot, didn't he? Yeah, he, he didn't die right away. He was a friend of everybody's. Everybody's. Everybody in this neighborhood know Jack. He was a friend. 
Real great guy. And uh, I mean, never bothered nobody. I don't know why nobody want to hurt a guy like that. I'm hurt, really hurt. Knowing people for all these years and then something like that happen, it's got to get to you. What about a, a guy who dies on a Friday night and then it's all over? Do you have any feelings, personal feelings, about what happened? I don't even think about it. I can't feel the heavy person. I don't even think about it. I tell you, I tell you honestly, I see his face, but I forget his face as soon as I see it. Uh, it's gone again. Uh, it affected me a great deal in the beginning, but I, uh, I got over it. I, I just, I just. Uh, they tell you that in the police academy right away. Don't take it personal, kid. You're gonna have ulcers before your time is up. I guess after a while you uh, you're uh, you just get hard a little bit, Dick. Uh, I'm not saying hard where you don't care. Hard where you can't let it upset you. And uh, I definitely could not take it home. I have to go in. I have three children. I can't let them see me upset over things like this. I remember once uh, uh, a car on Decap Avenue and Sumner Avenue hit the, hit a child that crossed the street. And the guy wanted to make the light, and he hit the child. When we picked her up, she had no more face left. She was uh, uh, like sliding along on the on the street, and he just simply took the face away. We brought this kid immediately to the hospital, Cumberland Hospital, and uh, there it was pronounced DOI. And uh, this kid remem reminded me of my own. It was about the same age. And I looked at this kid, and my partner has two children, and we looked at each other, and we just about started to cry. And then we had to go and get the parents, which we did. The father comes in, and the mother comes in, and they didn't know that their daughter is dead yet. So we told the father first, and he took it pretty good. And uh, so he told the mother. And I figured she's going to go wild now. And you know what she said? She says, I don't believe it. So I said, well, how can you not believe it? She says, I don't believe that my daughter is dead. I want to see her. And of course, we couldn't let her see her. So she, while we were there for about 45 minutes, she simply would not believe that the daughter is dead. And it upset me so much on that day that I went home, I couldn't eat. And my wife asked me what happened, so I told her. And every time I looked at this child, I, I see my own there. And uh, after a while, I, you know, like they tell you in the police academy, you don't take it personal no more. A cop is a human being. He's a guy who bleeds. He's a guy who cries. He's a guy who gets annoyed. He's a guy who has a family. He's a guy who has problems, like every other human being. <clears throat> and yet he's called upon many times to put aside these personal problems and do a job very dispassionately even though he may find that uh, it's sometimes it's difficult. As difficult as their job may be, the 12 men in the anti-crime unit account for more than 25% of the precinct's total arrests, even though they make up only 5% of the force. And last year, street crimes in the precinct were cut by more than a third. What makes it special is that for years, cops have been in radio cars in uniform. They've, they've looked at situations and they've said, gee, if I was only in civilian clothes, I could probably watch this fellow and make an arrest. Then somebody came along uh, two and a half years ago and said, let's take these same cops, your, your good, hard-working cops, your good, solid cops, who've worked in uniform for you, put them in civilian clothes, and let's see if they can go out and make these arrests that they've been saying they could do for years. And uh, they were put in civilian clothes, and they did go out and do the job. People, like, uh, they don't realize, like, I could name, like, in one night, you might watch 20 women walking down the block. They don't know that you're watching them. But you're watching them while they're walking from a subway train station to their house. You see three kids looking at the women. You follow them. This is, you know, like, you're protecting them. No one, they don't even know anything about it unless something happens. The cop in uniform prevents crime. He, he's there. He's, he, he's physical. You'd have to be a fool to, to commit a robbery or to commit a crime in front of a cop in full uniform. But now when you take some of the fellows I have with long hair, hippie looking, this is just another guy on the street. If you're so inclined, if you're inclined to commit crimes, you're going to commit this crime because you feel that you have very little chance of being apprehended. 
or being caught. Now, that's where the cop in civilian clothes comes in, and this is where he does his thing. He is there. He is the law. He is the man. He is the cop. George has seen a man shoved into a doorway. The men he's with appear to have beaten him over the head with a stick. Man. What's going on? It's 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 no, it ain't no problem. We just in between friends. In between friends. There's no problem. In between friends. There's no problem. Between friends. What's all this? Get up. Yeah. In between friends, man. Yeah, and we, we just got a little disturbance. What's your? Oh, I'm making all this. Oh, yeah, they got pictures and everything. Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, Jack. 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 Right, go ahead home. Go ahead home. Hey, get my stick, man. No, no, you can't have the stick no more. That's my. That's mine now. For my leg, I got, I got. Go get yourself a cane at the hospital. Unlevel, babe. Unlevel. Go ahead. I got to go ahead. You got the upper hand. You took my stick. My idea, or my thinking, a good cop is a cop who knows his job. Uh, believes in his job, believes that he does have, he, t he takes an oath of office, and an oath says, uh, preserve life and property, preserve the peace, protect life and property, and he, he believes in this, and he says that this is the oath I took, I, I, I believe it. M maybe it's being starry-eyed to say that you, you stood up and you raised your hand 20 years ago or 15 years ago, and you took an oath of office, and I know that there isn't there probably isn't one cop in this job that the day he raised his hand and took his oath of office, that he didn't really believe deep down inside that, yeah, I am going to be one hell of a cop. And this is what I believe a good cop is. It's a guy who doesn't change this ideal. He stays with this ideal, whether it's one year, 10 years, or 20 years, and he stays with this ideal. I am going to be a good cop. I'm going to do the job that I thought I was supposed to be doing when I came into the police department. And this, this is a good cop. This is someone who cares. As a child going to a parade, I used to see a, a mounted police officer, you know, uh, and I used to look up and say, gee, I'd, I'd love to be one of them, you know, sit up there on top of a horse and with a uniform on. And uh, this, uh, I was very interested in it, as a child, of course. But uh, as I grew older and went into the service and everything, it was completely washed out of my mind. Then uh, after I came out of the service and uh, I got married, of course, had three children, I worked at sev several different uh, jobs, but nothing was really promising. And I uh, haven't had much of an education because I lost my father when I was 14 years old. And I had to go out and, you know, put some bread on the table. So that aborted my education to, to a degree. When I finally decided that I had to get something secure to take care of my uh, family and try to live a little more comfortable than I was, I said, well, I'm gonna try civil service. The police department, uh, I got 199.1. Uh, and with my veterans credits, it came out to 104.1 and put me very high on the list. So within two months, I was appointed to the job. I was able to provide a little better for my family. And it uh, had a little prestige to it. You know, I, I was cleaner, uh, I wore clean clothes. And uh, also the fact that I was helping people for a change, you know. Uh, Somebody would come to me for help, and I'd done something, and I'd, at the end of the day, I would say, gee, look at that. The guy walked away happy, you know, satisfied. Most of the men, in fact, all of the men, they, they, they're working people. They make a salary. They, they know how far their check can go. They, they know how much money they have. They know what they've got, their bills they have to pay. And they know that if they were to lose uh, a week's pay out of their pocket, all of a sudden, it would be a disaster to their families. And most cops live hand to mouth. It, it would be a disaster to lose a week's pay. Well, you take some poor guy down here who makes his hundred to hundred and a quarter a week, and he's on his way home from work, and he, he gets ripped off. You, you take a week's pay out of his pocket. 
This this affects not only him, it affects his whole family. And these these are the things that the cops here know this. They they see the people. They see the people who come in and say, "Hey, gee, I only make ninety dollars a week, and some guy ripped me off for eighty. This is everything he's got. Eighty dollars a week to some people. Uh, maybe maybe not to some of the people who who watch your program. Eighty dollars a week may not be a hell of a lot of money." But to a guy who's only making a hundred, a hundred and a quarter, eighty dollars is an awful lot of money to lose on a street stick-up. This is uh, this is the motivation. The, the men know this, and uh, they, they live with it. When I first got assigned, it was uh, to a TPF unit, and uh, to the Seven Three Precinct, which is our neighboring precinct actually. And I had no idea what is going on here. You know, even though I had lived on Bushwick and Grove right down the block, so I, but I never walked around here. So after we got turned out, the sergeant would say, uh, look, you rookie, stay here. I have to give you a little instruction. So he would say, listen, fellas, don't go into a house alone because you might not come out alive. I would say, what the hell is he talking about? You know, everybody's out here to kill you. So always two guys assigned. So he sent the first guy ahead. He's an old timer, so to speak. He's like three years on the job, and he would know where to go and what to do. So now, uh, the first day on there, we had our uniforms on, nice and clean, you know. I had to walk up on Stone Avenue, up and down. About two o'clock in the morning, next thing I hear, a uh, uh, shopping bag full of garbage is coming down from somewhere, and it's landed right behind me. And my partner, I didn't even realize it. My partner was already behind the car, and I was still standing there wondering what happened. And, and there I realized, Jesus Christ, this guy is really fast. You know, you got to wake up. So I said, I wondered to myself, I said, no, who the hell would do a thing like this? I haven't done anything to anybody. And then later on at night, an ape comes flying from somewhere and hit the wall and splattered in the back, splattered my whole new, new brand new uniform, right? So I, I had my shoes and everything. So I said, gee, this is not my day. I go home and my wife, my wife stood up till three in the morning. She says, how was your first night? I said, take a look at me. I don't think I'll last 20 years. The first night, you almost killed me. <laughs> so. This misunderstanding is not directed at you as a person, but it's, it's directed to you, you as, a, as a symbol of authority or to you as a symbol of a society that people are unhappy with. So in time, you, you begin to realize that it's not you personally that, uh, that someone is out there who's, who's, who's mad at. He, he's not mad at John Jones' cop. He, he's mad at a, at a blue uniform. He's mad at, at a society that possibly he sees no hope in coping with. And uh, you, you represent this society. For the men in anti-crime, every night is spent riding and looking and waiting. It's boring, but it's also tense because nobody knows where or when something's going to happen. Get up, Michelle! There's been a report of a man with a gun in a bar. He's supposed to have threatened to kill his common-law wife and her daughters. some bullshit like that. So the daughter says he has a gun, but he doesn't have a weapon right now. Okay, come on, man. Yeah. Come on, man. Come with us. Right. You want a ride? You got a ride. You got one. Miss, come on. You got one. Okay. Come on, Michelle. Yes, man. Okay, they're not legally married. Wait a minute. That's my daughter about that crap. That's my daughter. Come on, Michelle. Michelle, come here! No! No! Come here! That's my daughter, man! No! 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 Yeah, I'm a crazy 
On their way to the precinct, the cops have learned that this man was warned by the police less than an hour ago to leave his wife alone. Now remember, no argument, no, 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 no words, okay? I'm not going to say a word. Okay. Take a seat over there, madam. madam. Right here. 7 I P A U. 10-1, the office catch. I don't think they have no idea. Okay, we'll see in a minute. Okay, you were here for a minute. Yeah, they just told him to leave me alone. The detectives, two detectives, the detectives yeah, came back here. They just What's told you to name, don't huh? hit me and leave me alone. And you're getting ready to beat me up again in the what brawl. What do you mean two detectives? Oh, I didn't know my mouth to you. Was gonna, if it hadn't been for John, it was like John was told the cop, no, he was going to beat me up girl, again. I wasn't going to do anything to him. He going to kill me because I, I had the cops on him and all that stuff. And he, he has a gun. Yeah, he got his stash around there somewhere. Y'all you find it. Somewhere. Find it. John. I'm scared of him. I am scared well, I of him. Know. And he gonna beat me up tonight. Told me I better not come home. And I'm and I have no place else to go tonight because I have to go up there and get my clothes. It's our place. You should go to family court if you can't make it up with him. He's not know? my husband. No, I can't no, go to family know, court. They, they passed the law. That uh, common law is also like family court. I'm going to get a peace warrant oh, for him. He keep goes, I, if I you go out the street now... for 19 years, you said, No, right? about 16 to 17. 16 if I go out the street now, he's going to beat me up. If, he, if you if let he him out here, he's going to beat me up. He, he got the gun in that bar. He done hit it somewhere. Oh, I'm waiting for the detective to come okay. and spoke to you. Okay. He'll be calling the three. He done hit yeah. all the people in the bar, and he said he could go get the gun in one minute. And they said, I'll come and they'll say... You're going to punch me. You told me you're going to get the gun in one minute if you want it. Well, I'm telling you, you say you ain't gonna hit me. What, what, you, what you do me? You go get the gun. You can go get your gun in That's one minute if you said. want it. Right. And don't tell me, guy, I've seen it a thousand times. I said that. And I better never see you again. Cause as soon as I see you, I'm gonna call a cop. Yeah, you hit? Oh, good. It'll be 20 years from now. You better not even have a, a play toy gun good, on you. Good, good. I'll call a cop. I ain't mama. I ain't that scared of you, you know. Yeah, I'm hip to that. Where did this happen at? The Home in the house. In the house. Yeah, you ain't here. You can't talk now. Right. I wanna do nothing to you. I ain't beat you. No. You ain't did nothing to you. He got some back on side his head. See these? You got black eyes? I got a strain on and bumped in my head here. You got a bump in the head? Yeah, I don't know what you keep oh, talking about. Because you oh, yeah. I'm 50. 50? What's your date of birth? 25th of December, 1920. 20? 19th, and you were born in Brooklyn here, or where were you? No, I was born down south. Were you ever arrested before, John? Hmm? Yeah, yeah arrested? sure, I was arrested. When was the last time? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was about three, four years ago. Before. What, 1971? Something like that. No, no, about 67. What did he got you for? Oh, they got me for guns. Guns? guns? Guns. No, One time we're cutting up somebody, next time we're having a gun. Oh, well, thank you very much. Y'all well, really. We find it. We find it. Let him talk. Y'all really trying to scuff trying me off. I'm trying to stop me off. John, go oh, ahead. That's what you told me. Okay. Uh, John. The best, right? the, um, what's called? John Richardson. Yeah. Listen. Uh, you are under arrest right now. Oh, let him have it. Okay. Under arrest? Under arrest on the complaint of uh, Rosalie McManus. She claims you hit her. You struck her, you had a gun, she seen the gun, and you threatened her with I had no gun. I don't know. I'm just telling you what she said, okay? Yeah. Now listen to me. I'm going to give you your rights. You understand them? You will answer to me. Yeah. If you don't understand me, you will tell me so, okay? You have the right to remain silent and refuse to answer questions. Right. You understand? All right. Anything you do, say, may be used against you in a court of law. Do you right. understand? I understand that, too. Okay. You have the right to consult an attorney before speaking to the police I'm not even about and to have an attorney present during questioning now or in the future. No, but then I you, want... You, wait a minute. Then Let I me want, finish this, okay? Yeah. And then you can talk whenever you want right. to talk, okay? Then I want her arrested. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you without cost. Understand you understand that? that? I understand all of that. If, if, if you... Look, you don't have to read this to me. Okay. No, I do that. have to read it. Yeah, I do have to read it. Thank you. Wait a second. If you do have not an attorney uh, available, you have the right to remain silent. You understand that? Yeah, I hear you. 
now that I have advised you of your rights, are you willing to answer questions without an attorney present? Without an attorney? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to answer my own question. Okay, uh, John, you will stay tonight at the 90 precinct. The 90 precinct. And tomorrow morning you have an opportunity to go to court and you will tell the judge whatever you think is right, okay? Hey, but I don't understand this, you understand? Well, why she, why she have to walk out? Which one is? I don't know. Why she have to walk She's out? She's the one who made the complaint. She made the complaint, right? Yeah. You understand? Know put on, uh, like the- Take, put, take the daughter's name. Put, here, it this, the put, put it this way, you understand I, me? I take her as a she witness. didn't find anything. Nobody find nothing, you understand? Nobody did nothing, you understand me? So why do I have to do this, you understand? Tell me why. Because she made a complaint. She made a complaint. She's, she claims that you had a gun, she seen the gun on you. No. I don't know, John. She didn't see nothing, man. I'm telling you, she didn't see anything. Rosalie, to uh, Rosalie, tomorrow at 9 o'clock, at 9 o'clock, no later than that. Okay? I tell you what you do. You I stay in jail tonight, right? You I stay in jail tonight. Hold it a minute. Leave time. Rosalie. See, Rosalie. Leave. Yeah. Leave. Rosalie, you listen. You better leave. If I stay in jail tonight, you have to leave town. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you better leave town now. Hey, hey, I mean what hey, I say. Hey, 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 h
A man's been held up and robbed. Three young men were spotted running through a playground and into a tenement. What do you mean, who? No, you're not with him. I mean, I'm upstairs, man. I'm you live upstairs? upstairs? Yeah. You're not with these fellas? Not with him. I don't know. Are you with him? He with me. He's with you? Yeah. And my friends, some, all my friends live on this block. And what are you doing in the building? I'm looking for them. In the building? They be in these hallways. They all live on this block. Hey, you want to get downstairs, you? please, and uh, tell the officer. Bring complaining up. Bring complaining up here. Yeah. We'll be one second, man. Yeah. Let me explain to you what happened. Yeah. Three dudes ripped a guy off. Yeah. They came into one of these buildings. Yeah. Now, it's a coincidence, maybe, that there's one, two, three men here, right? Yeah. Can you understand why we stopped yeah, you? Yeah, I understand. And just be patient for two minutes, and you can go on your way. These two clans uh, together. This guy was in the hall looking for his friends. No, and, uh, they're all clean. They're not clean. No. All right. They're not the ones. What you run for? Everybody else ran. Because you only ran. ran. Why do you continue to work in a place where there's so much trouble? Why do you do it? Well, I think that if I left and everybody else that was here, like me, left, what the hell would happen to the place? The many good people that are still left here, uh, they'd have to run too. If we all got totally disgusted with the, the little bullshit that we see in the street, or the lot of bullshit we see in the street, however you want to look at it, and decided we wanted out, what would happen here? What would happen to the good people that are left that need us? Their homes would be ripped off. They wouldn't be able to come out to even go to their mailbox. When you see a, an old woman that got robbed, just a purse snatch, right? And she shakes like a leaf. And it's not just for one hour. She's probably afraid for the rest of her life to come out and walk around here. And what is the guy getting even if you catch him? Two months suspended sentence, three months, maybe he gets a half a year. Is it really the punishment? Is it really what she's going through all the time? You know, you wonder. Look, you know, you, you see people, you come in and uh, you, you can see it. They want help. There's no way to go. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? A man has been beaten and robbed. He stumbled into the station house and collapsed on the floor. The beating has brought on an epileptic fit. Would you put another rush on the ambulance to the station house? Also, have emergency service response. Can you hold it? Well, you can wrap it up. Let's <laughs> Just hope restrain them. You, you talk about the dedication. The dedication is a, I guess, an overworked uh, word. But actually, these fellas are, are, are dedicated. They do care, and that, that's why they're here. That, that's why they're doing this job. He either has to believe in what he's doing, or, or he's one, one hell of an actor. And I don't believe they're actors. You ready? You do develop a sense of uh, of closeness, t togetherness, but this is because you're working together all the time. We as cops, many, well, going back over the years, uh, we tend to call one another brother, and we, we, we mean it. We, we mean it. This is, my, this is my brother. And uh, 
not to get uh, biblical, but uh, I'm my brother's keeper, and I, I hope he's mine. I hope he's out there worrying about me as much as I'm worrying about him. And I know in most cases that we do worry about one another. We had a cop shot yesterday in uh, the 71st precinct. Now, all over the city, cops were on the phone calling up, how is he, how did he get shot, is he going to make it, does he need blood, does he need this? You know, when, when one of ours is shot, and one of ours, it, it's a cop, it's one of our brothers, and one of our brothers is shot, we have to have that feeling uh, as if it was part of our own personal family. Is there a feeling of love for each other? I guess love is a is an odd word. I guess it's a very hard word for a man to talk about love for an, another man. But there is a love. There, there's a love of, of one another because you know that he is your brother. And it's the love that you have for a brother. He is your brother. Two weeks after Jack Motes was shot and bled to death on the sidewalk on Halsey Street, the 7-9 anti-crime unit arrested two suspects. One was 16. The other was 13 years old. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, not really. I can't think of anything else. That I think we've just about hit every facet of being a cop. I think you've gone over them. You've picked my brain and tried to pick my soul, and uh, did I, did that's I, it. Did I, did I pick your soul at all? I think you got me. I think you know uh, where I'm coming from. At least I, I hope you do. And uh, that's all I can hope for. Is that you know you know where I'm coming from, and you, you know that there are thousands of cops out there, j just like myself, who are coming from the same place. But th throughout the country, there are cops like me who are coming from the same way and who want to accomplish the same things. Make this just a l little better place to live in for everybody. And that's it.